number three, which is around healthy lives and well-being, and SDG number five, which refers to equality and empowerment. If you look at the region, Chair, it's, um, we are also monitoring things like AU Agenda 2063 on health and other regional protocols. And I think this particular one stands out, Chair, during this COVID-19 period. I think we've been making quite a number of uh, reference to this uh, AU Agenda 2063. And I think this is also something that I, stop, I talked strongly about yesterday when we were um, on the platform celebrating uh, Africa Day. Um, for women. The Commission aims to transform the society and the institutions by investigating complaints, educating the public, advocate for the promotion and attainment of gender equality. Honorable Chairperson, our APP presented here this, this evening is based on the Commission's long-term strategy, but also the long-term strategy was also informed by a very long process of actually looking at ourselves and, and looking and evaluating what we have been doing and how we have impacted um, during the last 20 years. And, and Chair, I must also indicate that um, we developed this uh, strategy in 2018, so it's not a new, new strategy. Uh, we developed and we presented it last year um, around this time. The only difference that we are bringing today is that uh, it's the same strategy. Uh, the only who's who's muting uh, the chairperson now? Janja, Uba no mute chairperson. No, you guys, you must check your IT. The chairperson Chess, is muted. Chess, Chess is not muted. It seems like she's having network problems. You can see that her, her, her mic is on. There's no mute there. I think it's her network that's, that's giving her problems. Tamara. Tamara. Janja. Kashifa. Yes, Chi. And there seems to be a network problem on the side of um, the, the chairperson for the Commission for Gender Equality. Um, no, why is, why yeah. is network a problem, a, 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 a troubling people who are, who are talking? Um, I'm not sure, Chair. I'll check with the CEO. No, 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 no. Check, check on it, check on it now. Because now it's going to give us a problem. Three hours, we can't work like this. The chair is presenting and then she's muted. Even myself, when I was busy talking, I was muted. She's in Tswane, I'm here in, in the East Rand. So it can be. Correct. Samara, okay. Yes, yes, I'm fine now, Che. I I I think I uh, there's something happened. Can I, can I continue, Chair? I'm about yeah. to finish. Um, I'm sorry about that uh, little glitch, uh, okay. Chair. I okay. was uh, indicating that the, 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 the strategic plan has been revised in accordance to the new framework that was developed by the Department of uh, Monitoring and Evaluation and as well as National Treasury. So that's why you will find that our strategy is slightly different from what we presented last year.
It's not a network problem. Somebody is doing this thing. This person, Kashifa, who is controlling the whole system, is the one who's doing this thing. Sorry, Chairperson, can I come in? No more. Yeah. Uh, uh, Chairperson, network problems do okay from time to time. However, I'm going to ask the IT person who is also in attendance in this meeting to just check for us what exactly the problem is because it's not a problem that occurs from Nelly's side as the coordinator of the meeting. So I'm going to talk to my colleague from IT just to check what the real problem is. Otherwise, network is always a, a common problem across the, all the meetings. Thanks. Okay. Okay. All right. Tamara, where are you now? Tamara, so good. And in Logan's and in Tolu. So it is advantageous. I mean, my meeting was set so. Chaperson. Yeah. The cargo was a yellow document. Lebai present time. Yes. Ile o itunyelwe oneli swa wa itunyelwa unjanja. Zinengi. Ile eti um. What has fun in this one now? You know. The strategic plan. FLA proposed commissioner's program 2020 to 2021. Okay, let me check. If I a strategic objective. If I one a strategic objective and then what are the strategic objectives as number outcomes, number output, number output indicators, the annual targets, and yes, we are one, Mamson. I'm I'm still checking, Chair. In like in seven to six phone, you have one year and done so well. Let me open my savings. Yeah, and my seven to phone, I'll call no fund the both persons card. That's why I'm naming Mamba if only Mamba in the iPad. <laughs> Yeah, one and seven three. A laptop, yes. iPad, a phone. I think she is reading from the opening remarks. It's the document that is labeled opening remarks. That's the one that the chairperson is dealing with. Hey, get go get so. So, I can't tell a proposed Lokunjan because I need to present on a Konamanch. Hello, Ucha person, you niggas are opening remarks on it. Hey, I was, yes, she's giving an overview uh, on, on behalf of, 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 on behalf of commissioners in, in, in governance issues. Like, Yes. So when now you are going to get to the document, So that's why it's uh, you know, for us. So, sorry, Gache. You lay the annual performance plan and budget 2020-2021. You are lay on it. Yep. Oh, by Mamuta Mara Matebul. Okay. Yep. And go, Gache. Okay. And uh, Sister Mara Matubega. Thank you, Thank Chair. You, Chair. Um, apologies once more. Uh, it's not your fault. <laughs> yeah, wrong, Chair. Hey, yeah, it's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Chairperson, I, I, I was still on the on the template, but I, I will quickly uh, just go through the um, the fact that. Um, 
CEO will actually be uh, speaking on those four strategic objectives, mm -hmm. um, which um, are about advancing and enabling environment uh, for gender equality legislatively, but also the second one is around prote protection and promotion of gender equality through our programs, which are around public awareness, education, investigation and litigation, things that we do daily. Um, and it's also um, around monitoring and evaluation and, and monitoring those issues that we strongly feel that they undermine the attainment of gender equality in the country. All the three strategic objectives, Chair, that I have mentioned are outwardly looking. And there, there is the last one, which is the fourth one, which is inwardly looking, which is around building an efficient organization that promotes and protects gender equality. Um, Chair, I, I just want to quickly uh, refer to the fact that um, when you look at the budget uh, that the CFO will be presenting, the Commission for Gender Equality has been approved for this particular current financial year a total budget of 89.9 million per annum. And I think um, I've been saying this many times when I come to, to, uh, uh, to appear before this parliament that given our broad mandate uh, as the Commission for Gender Equality, and I, I think even this broad mandate has been exacerbated by the COVID lockdown um, a, a epidemic at this present moment, there are so many things that are happening. The budget remains inadequate for the Commission fulfill its mandate. So CGE can adequately cover some of the issues, but cannot adequately cover things like human resources, emergency or emerging needs that we see, especially around this COVID-19 period, and, and, and some interventions that are under support services uh, that are required in all nine provinces. And I know that honorable members have always been raising issues of us not getting a into deep, deep rural areas, uh, and because of the resources that we currently have, um, we cannot be able to actually reach everywhere, uh, Chairperson. So with regards to staffing issue uh, issues and good governance, uh, the Commission would like to inform the committee of the CEO's contract that is coming to an end in July 2020. A plenary of February 2020 result that the position of the CEO be advertised. A letter informing the incumbent about the end of the contract uh, and the decision of the commission to advertise the position was shared uh, with the CEO. And by way of appraising the chairperson of the portfolio committee, a letter was sent to the chair of the portfolio committee uh, on the 8th of May 2020. And it is envisaged, uh, Chair, that the process will be finalized by end of July 2020 in terms of a recruiting for a CGE, um, a new CEO. In conclusion, Honorable Chair, I would like to, and Honorable Members, I would like to say that uh, the Commission will continue to oppose any practices that go against the founding uh, principles and values of the, of the constitutions which are human dignity, achievement of equality, achievement of human rights and freedoms, non-racialism, non-sexism, supremacy of constitution and the rule of law. And on behalf of the commission and staff, I would like to thank um, the honorable uh, members, the portfolio committee members, the chairperson, the whip, uh, for an, a, a constructive engagement. We're looking forward to a constructive engagement uh, after all the presentations on our plans and on our budgets. Um, and we hope that we will all be working together in terms of responding uh, to substantive gender equality issues uh, in South Africa. I thank you, Chair, for the opportunity and your patience. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Chairperson. Um, over to you, uh, CEO. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, good evening, honorable members. Good evening, uh, commissioners. Um, I will run through the presentation as quickly as possible, uh, Chairperson, and I will try and skip 
um, you know, quite a number of things uh, just looking at, at, at time issue. Um, I will skip the, the mandate uh, because I know that honorable members uh, know the mandate of the Commission for Gender Equality uh, very well. I will just start under the, the, the slide 10 that speaks about the principles that underpinned the strategy that we are putting before this parliament uh, this evening. Um, I think uh, having seen in terms of uh, the issues that are uh, currently happening, not just under COVID, but the process that we have uh, seen unfolding since uh, 2018, uh, when uh, the president uh, called a summit on, on gender-based violence and femicide, uh, we have ensured that uh, our strategic thrust uh, at the center of it looks into some of the efforts that uh, the country is, is putting in place as a way to try and combat gender-based violence and hopefully uh, be in a position uh, at one day for us, for all of us to be able to say we have achieved a goal of uh, having an equal society that is actually free from gender oppression. Um, I think it, 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 it bears without us really uh, reiterating much uh, as we always do whenever we engage with all our stakeholders and partners within this sector that our mandate is quite broad and therefore it almost touches on every aspect of life uh, here in, in, in South Africa. Uh, whether we look into issues around, you know, race, uh, gender, sexual orientation, the religion that affects, uh, you know, patriarchy is quite huge. And uh, we see its many heads on many uh, processes and, and, and many facets of our society, religion, faith, culture, and uh, so, social as well as economic class uh, issues. So uh, right at the center uh, of this uh, is, is us uh, being able uh, to ensure that we deal with gender uh, discrimination prejudice that may arise. And we are aware that uh, our rights, uh, whether as women, I mean, it bears uh, a, a substance with what the chairperson's uh, opening remarks were uh, in this meeting today around the violation that has happened uh, of, of young women. So we routinely get those uh, violations, whether we are women as LGBTIQ, A plus uh, societies and, and, and the like. And so we are also aware that this happens in a variety of places and spaces, um, in, even in private uh, intimate spaces and in a lot of other relationships in our families, in our homes, our communities, our workplaces, schools, and, and, and the like. And so we have also, you know, taken that into, into account that uh, all these violations are happening across various spaces uh, in, 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 in our society. Uh, given the list of areas above, where the promoting of gender equality and transformation has to happen. It is clear, therefore, that uh, uh, this task of ours really cuts across many areas of life, of work, and thus making the setting of priorities a burden. Um, when we had, you know, a conversation with commissioners uh, in terms of what are the kind of things that we would need to, to prioritize, uh, it was, you know, a really difficult uh, conversation uh, because uh, we do take into account that uh, everything must be right under our radar. But nevertheless, uh, we have had to uh, come together and really crunchingly say what are the kind of priorities that we will be able to set uh, because setting priorities is quite essential and it is unavoidable for any public institution that operates even under the current economic challenges and budgetary constraints uh, that, that we have. Um, and in selecting the priorities, the Commission 
uh, really sought to focus on issues that will be able to maximize its strategic impact uh, so that uh, we are able to have those activities that we can say or programs that we can say have had a, a quite a lasting change and furthermore we decided to identify the priorities that can best be addressed you know through use of some of our uh, unique uh, accountability uh, powers which we can exert and and ensure that uh, we use uh, in order uh, to tackle you know some of the serious gender equality barriers that are out there as well as uh, the, the 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 discrimination that we see uh, uh, going all around uh, we have still uh, agreed that uh, it is going to still be important that we we take ourselves to be a catalyst and be able to bring change a catalyst is somebody that can bring change or precipitate change uh, by pushing others to do exactly what they are in place that they are supposed to be doing and so uh, that a particular issue is still at the heart of, of, of the work that we will be doing and uh, we are going to be able to to ensure that uh, we we push as hard as, 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 as we can uh, in terms of some of the processes anything that came becomes we become aware of uh, we should be able to as quickly as possible a, a latch onto whether it's government departments or in, in some cases private sector uh, to those people and push them to do uh, what they are responsible to do and what they are obligated to do. Um, so that is right at the heart. Uh, let me just quickly move. Uh, I know the chair has already highlighted the strategic objectives that we are dealing with. Uh, ensuring that we have an enabling uh, advance, we advance an enabling legislative environment for gender equality, uh, promoting and protecting respect for gender equality, and ensuring that we have processes in place to evaluate issues that undermine gender equality, but also taking into account that these three important strategic objectives need a base and a capacity from internal that will be able to support it. And so uh, we, the fourth one is much more internal looking just to ensure that we push ourselves to be in a position to undertake uh, the work that uh, we have highlighted. I missed uh, a lot of, of problems. I missed a lot of, you know, looming uh, budget cuts, even at this stage, as much as we have a budget uh, that we, we are putting before this parliament, uh, we are aware that uh, there has been, you know, communique that seems to come from, from, from National Treasury directly uh, that we would still have to look into um, that one department and uh, in essence, everyone that gets money from the fiscal to do some kind of cut uh, on the budgets that they have already been given as a way to ensure that we contribute somewhat towards the 500 million uh, uh, budget issue on COVID re, uh, responses or priorities that uh, uh, the president has highlighted. Uh, and so even when we get to that particular point, uh, we will be able to come back to the portfolio committee to indicate what exactly uh, uh, we have done and where are the current things that we have cut uh, to ensure that uh, that cut that uh, it seems is mandatory for everyone uh, that gets money from the fiscus is done. So um, in as much as we are putting this uh, forward, um, we must uh, uh, be aware that there are those looming engagements uh, that are happening. We are hoping that we will be protected uh, looking into the fact that uh, gender-based violence, issues around gender discrimination and the like are even right at the heart of, uh, uh, you know, the, the COVID-19 uh, uh, processes uh, currently. Uh, but uh, if any changes be, uh, we will come back and indicate uh, at, at to, to the committee uh, uh, through commissioners in terms of what needs uh, to be done and what are the kind of things that we will do. Under a strategic objective one, where we are advancing and enabling legislative framework, 
This is where we're trying to evaluate uh, and make some recommendations on, on, on new legislation. We are reviewing uh, local and gender transformation legislation, looking into the implementation of the state and the private sector and the processes that are unfolding. There are quite a number of policies that we have put in place nationally uh, that uh, are trying to ensure that uh, gender transformation happens. And that's uh, what we would still be uh, zooming into and looking into that particular area and also compliance with international instruments, as the chair had said. Uh, under strategic objective two, uh, there are uh, two pillars uh, that we, we, we will be looking into. Uh, firstly, is just to ensure that we develop and conduct and manage information and education programs to foster an understanding for gender equality. And uh, chairperson members and, and, and commissioners um, in terms of this particular activity, I mean, this particular pillar, uh, as members would know, because of lockdown, there may be, you know, some issues there that get affected. I will deal with it uh, right at the end of my presentation in terms of some of the things that we are trying to do, taking into account that there has to be social distancing at this particular point, and there may be uh, activities that we may need to to come and uh, put uh, other mediums or come up with new ways of actually achieving those particular activities. And obviously, uh, the other pillar there is to ensure that we investigate complaints as they come to us, but as well as we pick them up, our act allows us to do, to undertake investigations out of our own accord and uh, be able uh, to mediate uh, where, where, where there's a need, uh, be able to take matters into equality courts uh, where uh, there's, uh, the need arises, uh, and a lot of times be able to litigate uh, as amicus mostly on some of the matters that we feel that they will be changing the gender landscape. Under strategic objective three, uh, uh, that's where we are looking now much more closely uh, into issues that are undermining attainment of gender equality. And uh, we are trying to look into uh, things that are in place. Uh, we are looking into ensuring that gender-based violence is addressed. We are looking to ensure that women's empowerment is addressed. And uh, we are trying to also look into issues around um, uh, representation of women uh, uh, in decision-making but as well as, as, as political life and, and monitoring and evaluating the implementation uh, of uh, some of our substantive you know, gender equality issues. Strategic objective four, as I indicated, is much more internal looking uh, to ensure that uh, we are able to strengthen, uh, have a strengthened institution that is able to deliver on its mandate and uh, uh, Chair spoke about uh, the fact that we need to look into issues about uh, impact uh, assessment, impact as to whether the programs that we are undertaking are actually uh, having any impact. And so we have a pillar there uh, that uh, we're looking into making sure that we increase influence and impact of, of the work that uh, the Commission is, 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 is doing and ensuring hopefully that we are able to have a, a transformed uh, society as our, our, our vision is. Um, the chair had already covered a lot of legislative and policy frameworks that we deal with, and so I'm not going to look much into slide uh, 20 and 21 and the like, and right towards 2023. 20, um, I, will, I will get uh, directly into slide 23, uh, because those policies and legislative framework have already been highlighted uh, in the presentation that was done uh, by the chairperson. Um, when uh, members look into the current APP, um, there were, you know, new processes or a, a new framework that was put by National Treasury, and that particular new framework is also a framework that is forcing all of us uh, to ensure that the activities that we put in place are activities that have impact in a way. And uh, that's why even, you know, our APP, the way that is now rewritten, has to uh, uh, fit specifically that particular new framework that has been put forward. 
uh, and the idea is really to highlight and indicate what are you know the kind of output indicators that we'll be getting out of some of these uh, processes and the work that we'll be doing. So in a nutshell, Chair, we will still be undertaking work uh, to look into, into submissions, whether new uh, as, as we engage with the South African Law Reform uh, 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 Commission uh, and or those bills that are passed uh, through Parliament uh, as well, even though it's very rare, uh, those uh, 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 bills that will be passed uh, through uh, Section 75 at legis provincial legislature level. Um, and so we will still uh, uh, be ensuring that any bill that passes through, we are able to look at it from a gender perspective and make inputs. Uh, and I must say, uh, uh, I mean, uh, since this this uh, uh, particular you know portfolio committee, this new parliament specifically, uh, we have seen in this last financial year uh, how you know we have been called upon a lot of times to en to be engaged on on some of the bills or sorry submissions that we have made uh, in a lot of 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 of, of bills uh, that have passed through. So we really uh, applaud that and really hope that uh, we will uh, still continue even into this uh, new year have that particular engagement as far as uh, you know some of the submissions are concerned um uh, just for us to check how impactful uh, our submissions are uh, when it comes to you know some of the bills that uh, parliament is, is is looking into or putting in place uh, we have also uh, put uh, an activity there where we will be able to go through uh, some of the submissions and have a, a specific report that just looks into this uh, to then highlight, uh, be able to highlight to say what are, you know, whether the submissions that we make, whether the issues that we put forward are actually taken forward or not. And, and that will then give us a sense in terms of what are the kind of things that we probably need to do uh, to engage much more uh, to ensure that we are able to influence a legislation much more towards a gender equality matters. And so we, we, we will be having that particular report. Uh, and, uh, next, and next, uh, we will we be will, uh, uh, having, uh, we have been having, uh, you know, reports uh, in the, that of, of transformation work that we did in the previous uh, 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 processes. Uh, so we would uh, still be looking into those, but as well, we are still continuing with engaging new uh, entities. Uh, as, as we know, because of budgetary constraints, it becomes quite uh, difficult for us to actually go all broadly. Uh, so we're taking a chunk by chunk each year. And so we will uh, uh, be having, uh, uh, continuing to have those uh, engagements uh, as far as uh, uh, transformation uh, uh, issues are concerned, but also not forgetting the previous year's work uh, where we will be able to still continue and investigate and look into, you know, what has been happening. We've got reports of previous, for instance, of institutions of higher learning. We've got a report for this uh, uh, financial year that has just ended in March that uh, is looking specifically on TVETs. We couldn't take all the TVETs. We are still going to be continuing with the TVETs, uh, uh, for instance. Uh, uh, so that's uh, uh, the work that we are still going to be able uh, to, to continue with and, in, and, 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 and highlight. Um, as far as some of our international instruments are concerned, we also try and do this work depending on uh, what are also the obligations and when is government going to be presenting. Uh, when we were putting this plan together, uh, and because it's, it's also even a, a strategy that started in 2019, we were aware somewhat that uh, the, the ministry uh, on behalf of government will be presenting uh, before the CEDAW committee in October, November, uh, this particular financial year. And so we had also gone out to just, you know, get information on CEDO and the like. We have a report uh, that we are going to be lodging with this parliament 
uh, we were just uh, in a lot of our reports uh, have been finalized, but just because of COVID, we were not able, and the lockdown, we were not able to, you know, receive those uh, from the printers. And uh, we are looking forward to engaging the committee as well in terms of some of the issues that we have picked up as far as, you know, CEDO is concerned, some of the issues that we've picked up as far as the SDGs are concerned. Um, we've been doing a lot in, in terms of SDGs. We are aware that SDGs have got quite a number of goals. Uh, and in as much as goal five uh, is specifically gender equality, but gender equality is cutting across uh, all the goals. There's work that we've been doing uh, also with the knowledge that there will be some bills that are put forward around climate change. We have been engaging with various communities and seeing how communities in the mining areas in the East Rand, how uh, communities in, 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 in Caltenville and the like, specifically women have suffered and we have been able to document some of those things and uh, those reports are ready and we are hoping that uh, once uh, uh, we, we reach to a level where you know the printers can then uh, bring those that we will be able to have a session uh, with, the, with the committee. So those are still you know, activities that really relate to engagement, various stakeholder engagements on some of uh, the reports or a lot of reports uh, that uh, we have uh, put in place or that we have finalized as, as the commission. Under SO2, uh, quickly, um, we have uh, put forward, you know, some of the uh, themes and some of the materials that we are looking at. We've seen that issues of sexual uh, reproductive and health rights are, are, are really high. Uh, there are issues around uh, uh, gender-based violence, as we know, so we will be coming up with uh, quite a lot of materials uh, in terms of, of, of those particular themes. Uh, but as well, uh, gender mainstreaming is still a pivotal activity that we need to do. We are still going to be uh, taking forward. We will engage with the committee as well, what we have found with the municipalities that we dealt with. And uh, we are still also going to continue uh, uh, to look into other uh, uh, municipalities that uh, we are going to have these interventions. Uh, and as members are aware, we wanted to do local government because local government is right at the center of um, service delivery. And it's important that uh, uh, if they get gender mainstreaming correct right there, uh, then we will alleviate quite a number of issues and problems that we have had. Um, we have a, a community radio program this community radio program is different from the usual interviews that are done, for instance, by commissioners and the like. It's a specific program that we've put in place uh, for education officers and in some instances, even legal officers to undertake uh, uh, some sort of outreach or, or you know, uh, in engaging with communities in their language of vernacular and so uh, we target um, communities uh, in, in, in rural areas. Uh, when we engage on the annual report from the previous year, we will be able to indicate and highlight you know, some of the uh, community radio stations that we have engaged uh, or, or that we have appeared on. We, we are still going to engage and continue with this particular uh, program uh, uh, in ensuring that we go out there within vernacular language, in communities that sometimes we may not even be able to reach physically and are able to talk about gender equality issues, to highlight what people's rights are and give us steps to of what they need to do should their rights be trampled upon. Um, so that, that is uh, one uh, activity as well or program that we'll still be continuing with. Um, we'll continue with social media campaigns. Uh, we have been at pains in terms of ensuring that we also are able you know, to engage the youth as, as, as the commission. And so uh, we will also be running social media uh, campaigns uh, uh, this year uh, with a particular thematic areas. Chair, um, we also had put an activity around uh, outreach and advocacy legal clinics. 
uh, in our plan at a point when we were uh, putting it together. However, we are aware now that uh, it's one of the activities that will probably be affected uh, due to the fact that uh, social distancing at this stage is, 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 is an issue. So it's one of the activities that uh, we have been engaging uh, and I'll, th there's a slide further down right uh, uh, towards the end of my presentation that highlights the processes that we have been trying to do. We've been engaging with the SABC, SABC education specifically this time around. We have an MOU with the SABC Foundation and we are trying to utilize an entry uh, uh, into SABC Foundation through that particular MOU uh, to ensure that we have education programs that maybe uh, uh, we can uh, uh, have uh, on TV, on vernacular, and, and even on some of their community radio uh, stations. So that, that's, that there's a progress. Um, we've had uh, the first meeting. The second meeting that we'll be having with them is scheduled for this Friday um, at 12, uh, just for us to see uh, what could be workable as far as that is concerned. And of course, uh, we will have to sort of try and see where to reprioritize uh, some of the budget. Uh, the CFO, I'm sure, will highlight that uh, in order, you know, for us to 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 then uh, put money because there may be a need. I don't think that SABC Education uh, will be able to carry some of these things that we want to do for free, um, and like we have been doing all along. So that's another. A, a matter that we just wanted to bring uh, to the attention. Uh, we will engage, still engage with uh, our uh, strategic um, uh, uh, like-minded organizations. We'll strategically still engage with them. Um, we don't see that particular activity being compromised. Uh, uh, we have started, I know that in some of the provinces, they have already started, uh, you know, to engage uh, with some of the strategic partners uh, uh, that are out there on some of the work and some of the things that uh, we need to work together on and, and, and push forward. Uh, we still continue with complaints. Uh, it's right at the center of, of the work that, that we need to do. Um, we've been having some systemic uh, 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 problems, systemic issues as far as uh, you know, systemic investigations that we have done. Members will remember that in the last financial year, one of those was when we were looking into the shelters. Uh, in as much as the report is out, for instance, for the shelters, there's still a lot of work that we need to do uh, in terms of taking, you know, some of the findings and some of the recommendations forward. Uh, so we will look into that. But we are also coming up with new uh, systemic uh, uh, investigations uh, this year uh, that we will be looking into. We are looking into areas around uh, sexual and, and reproductive health rights, uh, for instance. There are quite a number of things uh, that have been coming up there, and uh, we will be able to appraise uh, uh, the committee uh, as we report uh, uh, throughout the year in terms of what exactly has happened there. We still uh, at the center, as I indicated, is the issue of uh, gender-based violence and ensuring that uh, there is a proper response by the country to address and combat uh, gender-based violence. Uh, and we will also be taking into account, you know, new commitments uh, uh, that, that have been made. We are aware uh, at this stage, for instance, that um, the the NSP is now uh, uh, finalized. It's out, uh, even though we are still trying to find out what is happening as far as the structure is concerned. We've been engaging with all the relevant uh, uh, parties, but we are going to still delve into that particular work, check what uh, is going to be done, what's going to be done differently, whether, uh, you know, some of the recommendations that we have done previously on the work that we have done, whether uh, that has been followed and the like. We also um, were hoping, because we know that uh, in, in about six months ago, the president had actually indicated that uh, there will be an emergency uh, response plan. And um, there's a report that is now out of the emergency response plan. We just want to delve deeper into it to really check whether 
the particular uh, commitments that were done uh, for just that uh, response plan, whether uh, they have actually uh, taken place and what has actually happened. So we will be able to, to just give a, a brief uh, highlight in terms of uh, how that is going. I think uh, the committee in, in its previous, uh, in our, in, in the previous engagements that we've had with it had highlighted that uh, we should also be able to look into the work that the ministry is doing and the like. And we took into account the fact that the ministry has just put uh, forward a gender responsive budgeting framework, uh, having taken into account as well that in this last financial year that has just ended in March, we've just put out a status report uh, uh, that looks into uh, women empowerment. And so um, the, the, the idea was uh, we look into you know, the issues that will be coming out of our report, look into their specific processes that the ministry uh, would have uh, uh, done with various departments. Uh, so uh, we'll be looking into what the mini whether the ministry did what they had said they will do when they put the framework together, but as well, importantly, whether the other departments are actually following gender responsive budgeting, a framework that has been put in place, because we do believe that if we could get it right uh, with all the departments uh, on the issue of, of responsive gender budgeting, uh, we will be able to really do away with some of the, the problems that we have uh, seen and, and, and the issues. Um, we also will be looking now from our research uh, as well perspective, uh, the issue of coming up with two reports, Chairperson, I think a lot of times we all make a lot of noise during this uh, month of, of winter months, uh, whenever you know there are deaths that are happening, whether in the Eastern Cape, whether in Pumalanga and the like, uh, on circumcision. Uh, but uh, we felt that we have not really delved into that uh, particular area. Uh, so we will be uh, uh, doing some work around there and we will also be we'll have a, a report for that and we are also going to have a report on fatherhood and the rights of of, of, of fathers um so that's a a, a a a chair the work that will be undertaken really under um the three strategic objectives uh, uh, i've tried to to really summarize um activities and the things that we'll be doing under so4 uh, that's where we have uh, put issues around uh, M&E, um, taking into account, I think, uh, even in the in the previous engagements that we have had with this committee, uh, there was a, a real push uh, uh, on the commission to say you need uh, uh, to come up with an M&E plan uh, so that you are able uh, to ensure that there is impact. But over and above that, uh, we also, you know, uh, took into account the fact that there are quite a number of, uh, uh, you know, findings and 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 recommendations that we make, even of things of 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 quite of the past. Uh, for instance, now during COVID, we know that uh, we are all running around in rural communities, looking into issues around water and the like. And for instance, the CGE has had a report around that. So. We are uh, implementing a tracking tool uh, that will assist us to say even those uh, reports uh, where we have put uh, uh, recommendations a while back so that we don't forget them and we are able to, to check uh, uh, what is happening and how far some of those things are going. And um, then we will also have, um, a, this is where we are, we are also trying to have some key strategic partnership agreements uh, on, 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 on some of the work. Uh, uh, we know that uh, our CG Act is very clear to say we must be able to collaborate and also looking into the issues around our budget. It becomes key that we also uh, see where we can leverage and who are some of the partners that we can uh, sort of be in a position uh, uh, to work uh, uh, with. And uh, we are also uh, coming up with reports as far as our coverage is concerned. Uh, we do have 
a, a tool that we utilize on impact assessment as far as the media is concerned. So we do have uh, that particular tool uh, uh, just in terms of, of, of media work uh, that, that we, we undertake. And, and so we are still going to continue with that, but also ensure that we have a much more consolidated report uh, that will be looking into some of the traditional means uh, of, of coverage that are out there that we would have utilized as the commission. We do have uh, commissioners that are experts in various areas. They do write uh, 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 out there and we always get uh, spaces out there for, for their papers that they write and uh, also uh, looking into other digital media and we would want to have a, a specific uh, a report for that. Um, there's work that we did in the previous financial year a little bit uh, 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 that you know took a while to actually uh, uh, um, uh, move uh, the issue around knowledge management and the like, um, and so we are we are still going to pick up on that work and ensure and ensure that we develop on that work that that we have done, and so I have also taken. Uh, the liberty to sort of try and summarize the key, key programs that I'm not going to go uh, through uh, 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 chairperson that I've just put in there in the boxes uh, uh, just to highlight uh, uh, those uh, particular programs uh, that are in, in the APP. Um, Chair, I think the guide uh, uh, or the letter that of invite was also very clear that we must uh, try and highlight uh, you know, some of the work that we have done uh, in, in, is a, as a way to respond to issues around uh, COVID, the pandemic. Uh, and uh, we have uh, obviously uh, through uh, our legal, uh, we have been essential workers. Uh, we were listed as essential workers. And, uh, and so we have been able uh, to still continue with uh, some of the work that relates to complaints and, and, and some of the um, inquiries that, that we have. Um, we did have an issue um, on how gender blind the regulations were. And I think uh, there was uh, oversight there, you know, from, from government uh, in ensuring that they are actually able to, to engage uh, uh, with us. Uh, they just listed us very late, by the way, uh, on that day, on the 26th, when we received this thing, uh, that we were now essential workers and the regulations were all were already out. So uh, even though that's what happened, not all was lost. We were still able to engage uh, with government uh, on the regulations as far as, you know, some of the things that we were finding, we were seeing. There's really been lots of work uh, that, that, that has been happening uh, that we're looking into. We have had to write various letters to some institutions like Abo ShopRite and SPA in different provinces, uh, in Limpopo specifically, you know, there were problems where all of a sudden the retailers there were not selling sanitary pads, for instance, uh, now wanting to say it's in terms of the regulations and uh, the baby clothes. I think the regulations had an oversight as well. It's kind of uh, highlighted the fact that um, uh, only baby food and, and, and nappies will be sold, uh, but forgetting that uh, as a country, we have uh, you know, diverse cultures. Uh, there are those of us that believe that you know, when, when you are pregnant, you don't necessarily buy clothes from day one. You actually uh, sometimes buy clothes. As I go to the hospital, then somebody else must just dash this way and go to the shops. And there was an oversight uh, from the regulations as far as that is concerned. And we were able to then uh, engage. And uh, luckily, uh, the ministers there were able to then change uh, the regulations accordingly and uh, 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 allow uh, baby clothes to be sold. Um, uh, as well, there have been uh, you know, generally lack of he other health care services and specifically for women that are related to reproductive health rights. Uh, members, one of the biggest issues that we've been dealing with is the issue of uh, termination of pregnancy. Um, we have been following through, you know, various hospitals uh, where we, we were getting uh, sometimes even picking the same from the social media, 
the fact that uh, one would have an appointment already uh, to go and do a termination and then the next thing uh, when you get there you are not being given um, a specific assistance as far as that is concerned and um, so we that's one of the things that we have really been looking into just to see uh, how we can uh, uh, assist and, and unlock uh, that work, uh, having uh, engaged through commissioners to engage with various MECs, uh, various HODs, uh, as and when we pick up these things in Gauteng, it was really prevalent. Uh, uh, MEC was, was engaged with as well and, and all the other uh, 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 hospitals. Um, also under reproductive health rights, the issue of access to contraceptives uh, was also a big issue uh, where we were seeing that uh, uh, there wasn't any any access and a lot of people were, were complaining around this particular issue to say uh, uh, we have a serious challenge and we looked into that and um, uh, commissioners have also been running you know with programs obviously where they were looking into issues around PPE taking into account that the frontliners in, in these uh, hospitals are women uh, a lot of times, whether it's nurses and the like. Uh, 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 and so uh, that's part of what we, we have uh, uh, been doing. Um, we have had some gender-based violence uh, matters. Um, we, have, uh, we are just about to finalize our own report from our own statistics. Uh, I, I heard the chair was talking about the uh, statistics. We have also been writing uh, to various uh, command center, uh, uh, to the police. When we were writing to the police at provincial level, they have refused and they were telling us that they need uh, nationally to tell them to actually release those particular statistics um, that they have been going around in the media, uh, 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 putting out, uh, and we wanted a basis for that. Um, and what we have done, we have written to the National Police Commissioner at this stage, um, and we just want to see what his response is before we actually are able to escalate uh, uh, to commissioners, for commissioners to then engage uh, specifically with, with the minister. Uh, so we've written to the command center. We have received today only, uh, some statistics uh, from the uh, command center. We still have to really look into that. Uh, but I mean, just at, on the at, at glance, it is already interesting. So I'm hoping that we will also have an engagement at some point once um, uh, commissioners are ready to engage uh, with uh, the portfolio committee on, on this uh, particular issue of statistics, because there have been a lot of uh, uh, you know, concerns that uh, uh, our commissioners have also been highlighting because people are putting statistics out, then they then change the statistics, the numbers and what have you. So at this stage uh, today, uh, this afternoon, this late afternoon, we received uh, stats uh, from command center and uh, earlier in the, in the week, we had just received uh, from Lifeline. And so we we'll, are going to be collecting the statistics that are coming. Uh, from all these other areas that are supposed to be really at the center. Um, when you look at uh, at the point, uh, we have highlighted as well some of the statistics that we have received. We have also seen uh, some, you know, mani marginal increase really as far as our o o 0800 was concerned uh, on issues of gender-based violence. We have not just only received issues of gender-based violence uh, 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 only, uh, we have also received, you know, other other matters, uh, but we have seen, you know, some some increase uh, in most and mostly when we look at our own statistics, we see that we have received quite a number of uh, 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 issues from KwaZulu Natal, Gauteng, Northern Cape, Western Cape, and Mpumalanga, um, as far as, as as that is concerned. So that is just briefly in terms of uh, GBV. We had issues that we were also dealing with as far as shelters were concerned. Uh, we had uh, a call, you know, from one of the NGOs that is working on the ground uh, at the time, specifically in KwaZulu Natal, that had indicated that they are having a problem in placing, uh, you know, women 
uh, or survivors of gender-based violence or victims of gender-based violence are not necessarily able to access shelters. Um, other than the fact that, you know, infrastructure and all the other issues of not having beds and the likes, uh, we also had a basic issue where uh, the shelters were refusing. Uh, even when they have space, they were refusing. Uh, I think it was as a way as well for them to protect, to say, we will only, you know, put in people that are able to give us a certificate and ensure and show us that they are COVID-19 negative. Um, so we have had to work with the shelter movement uh, 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 just from our, our legal work perspective to, to look into some of the protocols that are there uh, to check what are the protocols of all the various uh, shelters. Uh, but as well, um, there has been, you know, uh, we were quite happy, you know, when the, when the interim steering committee as well had pushed from their side before they were disbanded to actually see if we can have, you know, one or two, even though at the time we were aware of the one that was here in Gauteng, where you can have, you know, a, an in-between kind of shelter uh, as a way to take into account, you know, some of the issues that the shelters were highlighting in terms of people being COVID uh, negative. Um, we've also noted, um, uh, obviously, the issue of, of Strandfontein, uh, uh, the camp there in, in, in Cape Town, uh, in terms of uh, some of some of the issues uh, that, that have come up. Uh, we have been engaging on the side with a Human Rights Commission. In fact, we, we wanted to be, uh, you know, one of the uh, people that uh, participate in that particular litigation. However, um, due to the fact of the, of, the, of the time frame and due to the fact that we were all in a hurry because I think the city also had a time frame in terms of which they were going to disband this particular shelter. And we knew that uh, when a lot of people come in as amicus on some of these matters, it may also affect, uh, you know, some of the timelines and the like. Uh, we then resorted to, uh, you know, not to formally uh, uh, being part of that process, but obviously uh, there is work that we are doing because we have uh, sort of noted, you know, some of those uh, challenges and some of the issues uh, that are happening, but as well, it actually was an indicator to us to say uh, this thing that we keep saying, whenever services are done, there must be a proper gender mainstreaming thought that is put in place. It, it actually also came up, you know, when you look at uh, in as much as we're in a hurry, the kind of things that we did, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, the rapes are happening in some of the shelters and the like. Um, so I think that's um, really, uh, in a, in a oh. nutshell, uh, some of the Zemelo. issues, Chair. Yes, Chair. Zamelo, would you all round up uh, because uh, we want members to engage with your report? Yes, I'm, I'm right there, uh, uh, Chairperson. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, I think a lot of things I've, I've already touched upon in these slides I've tried. Uh, to highlight all the issues, termination of pregnancy and all that uh, are, are there in the report, but I've already spoken uh, to those things. I've already spoken when I was dealing with issues around uh, uh, us having some new uh, media vehicles and, and the fact that we are trying to come up with a, now a digitization uh, a, a strategy as an institution. Um, so we have, um, you know, been doing that. There are some webinars and some dialogues that we have been part of uh, uh, during this time as well as, as a way to really try uh, to be part of, 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 of the process and ensure that uh, we don't, even during lockdown, we are able to impart uh, the expertise that we have in the, in the commission. And uh, Chair, I think I had already highlighted really uh, the work and, and that we are doing as far as some of the programs that have been impacted uh, by COVID-19. And uh, this report uh, was uh, uh, circulated on time. And so, Chairperson, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, CEO. Um, CFO.
Unmute. Yes. Uh, good evening. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, good evening to honorable members, uh, to the commissioners of the CGE uh, and colleagues uh, from parliament. And good evening to you too, CEO. Uh, Chairperson and honorable members, <clears throat> There's a separate presentation made. It's uh, comprised of uh, 23 pages, 23 slides. Uh, it's titled... Where, where, uh, are you? where are you? Check. Oh, oh. I'm... Here am I. <coughs> Chairperson. Uh, I was making reference to the presentation that has been circulated before. It's a 23 slide presentation. Commissioner, when we are together on the BL, no one has video yet. May I continue? Commissioner, when the BL, I'm going to have video yet. Okay, th th thank you, Chair. Uh, I was uh, referring members to the presentation that has been circulated. It's a 23 slide presentation. Uh, and effectively, Chair, this presentation is a, a, a supplementary presentation to the earlier presentations by the chairperson of the commission and the CEO. Uh, effectively, we are basically just translating those strategies, plans in the APP and activities they're on into a financial financial plan, being the budget. <clears throat> and as well, in this presentation, we seek to address or respond to specific information requests that were made uh, by the committee in the letter of invitation to this particular meeting. Chair, for the record, uh, the CGE budget allocation, it's, uh, it's not a vote in itself, but uh, it's a main division within uh, the budget for the Department for Women, Youth and People with Disability. So we are basically just a component uh, uh, therein. And for appropriation purposes, uh, our budget line will be included as a subline within uh, the, the appropriation for the vote, vote number 13. Chair, and as well, I think uh, if you look into slide number, how, how I will do the presentation, Chair, I will be referring members to a slide that they will be talking to, to make it easy for, for reference. Uh, the last bullet point under slide number two, slide number three, Chairperson, has got to do with uh, a request for the CGE to uh, indicate the uh, uh, the, the impact of COVID-19 into these plans that we are presenting. Uh, what we can also, uh, as a way of introduction, Chair, indicate that uh, this budget, as it is tabled, has been adopted uh, before uh, the lockdown. And as the Chairperson of the Commission was indicating that uh, there was an internal process in which uh, the budget was approved. Uh, and the approval happened uh, on the 26th of March. And then as a result, uh, most of the changes that has happened within the macro environment in which we operate from governments, I mean, the government, the direction that we got from the executive arm of government around how to respond to uh, COVID-19 have not been factored into this particular plan. So the figures as we are going to be presenting are, are being presented uh, without factoring in the lockdown interventions. Chair, if we move to the next, next slide, uh, the next slide pertaining to factors that uh, have impacted on how the budget was arrived at, the CGE budget, we are basically highlighting the economic, macroeconomic uh, environment, including its impact on uh, the fiscal conditions. Uh, point us to take is that uh, at the time of budgeting, at the time of allocation, 
uh, economy wide, there have been low GDP growth. I think uh, what has been updated subsequent to that was that uh, by the NPC uh, of last week was that uh, the economy is actually contracting. So we are expecting that uh, the growth will be a negative growth, no longer just low. And then the impact of it is that uh, there, there won't be enough f fiscal space for the allocations. Uh, some of the factors that I indicated are basically just the economic indicators. Uh, the fact that uh, as a country we have a, a high debt to GDP ratio and the like. So, so Chairperson, uh, the last point on this slide is just to indicate that uh, these economic conditions will also have uh, a direct implication for the CGE. Firstly, in terms of allocation, but secondly, in terms of uh, uh, impacting, negatively impacting on the uh, social environment. Uh, when there's no money, when the economy is not doing okay, we know that uh, there are always negative uh, social impact. And then the mandate of the CGE basically requires the CGE to be uh, activist uh, and, and start addressing the social ills that uh, normally follows a uh, uh, weak uh, economic environment. Chairperson, I'm going to skip the next slide, slide number five. Basically, this slide was also responding to specific questions that were asked in the invitation to say the CG needs to indicate uh, how the budget budget figures have been arrived at, the approaches. So, so in essence, uh, we are saying we have approached the uh, costing costing uh, this particular APP in line with the, with the guidelines. We have followed uh, the acronyms that have been indicated on the first point under the slide slide number five dealing with planning principle parameters. Uh, the acronyms ABB is activity-based budgeting. Uh, the next one is zero-based budgeting. Another one is uh, activity-based costing. So effectively, uh, these approaches uh, have been prescribed by National Treasury, but uh, they are also best practice in the sense that uh, we uh, the numbers are not thumb-sucked. The numbers have been worked through following a, partic a particular established process. And, and some of the parameters uh, are indicated. Uh, we, we, at a point of bu uh, budgeting, we were anticipating that uh, the cost of living adjustment uh, will demand a 5% increase across the board. So that is how we have uh, affected uh, our current budget. Uh, and then we have costed the entire establishment. We will share information around uh, how the CGE establishment uh, is structured. And we'll also share some further information. Uh, Chairperson, we can skip to the next uh, slides. The next two slides where we have uh, a graph uh, is basically to draw, to paint a picture for the committee to see that uh, over the years, historically, our, bu our budget was uh, really stagnant. If you look into slide number seven as an example, there's a graph on the side which uh, indicates a very flat curve. That graph basically indicates that over the years, uh, for the preceding financial years and also into the outer years of M MTF, our budget allocation remains uh, relatively flat. And the takeaway is to the effect that uh, whenever there's a budgetary increase, it's just an increase to cater for, for inflation, cost of living adjustments that are increasing and, and price, changing, pr price changes due to inflation. So effectively, there have never been a real injection into the CGE budget. So that is from National Treasury. That is how constrained we are in, in coming up uh, with uh, our particular budget limited resources, and then with a history of, uh, you know, small allocations. Chair, slide number eight, just for the benefit of uh, members as well, is to indicate how the CG, the nature of the CGE budget. Uh, CGE budget also based, based on the CGE's uh, business model. We are an insourced uh, entity. 
we don't we don't make use of consultants to do the CGE work. The core mandate we have uh, internal resources to do that. We've got officers, we've got professionals uh, who are in the employ employment of the CGE. But as well, one other character is that uh, we we've got uh, uh, provincial presence. So we are spread in all the provinces of the Republic. We've got an office, we, 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 we provide service delivery there. Uh, and as well, I think uh, the nature of our services are such that uh, they will be, they will require physical contact. And then uh, we are using quite multiple uh, modes basically to deliver our mandate. We go to communities, uh, we use uh, technology where technology is relevant. We use radios, we use TV, uh, electronic media. We, we, we do as well use those particular uh, channels. And other takeaway on the right hand side of uh, the slide is just to indicate that uh, the, the relationship, correlationship between COE, not CEO, COE, uh, compensation of employees, uh, it's 70% of the overall budget. Uh, we, we, we will dissect that particular aspect. Uh, most of it as a takeaway is that uh, the money goes to service delivery because we are an in-source service. And then some of the things that uh, are also part of the characteristic of our budget is that uh, we, because we, we, we are, we've got offices everywhere, we use telecommunication to connect offices uh, we travel to our communities, we travel uh, intra-offices, intra-institution. Intra, uh, uh, one of the constraining things that we have, Chair, is that uh, most of our budget line items are fixed. We, we don't have uh, enough flexibility uh, in the budget. Uh, the baseline is very tight. Uh, and as we are going to be looking into further slides, uh, we should also look into the fact that uh, the way we have structured ourselves internally, we've got sub 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 programs. We've got a commissioner program. We've got uh, the main uh, core service delivery program, and we've got the uh, corporate services, which is admin. Uh, Chair, in the next slide, we are sharing the details by line item as to what our budget, our budget is, is made up of. The total budget as the chair has introduced is, uh, if we look into on that particular slide, slide number, number nine, the grand total on slide number nine, the rightmost column, the blue one, the one which is color in color, it's 89.9 million. That is the total allocation that has been granted by National Treasury. And in this, in this slide, we are basically breaking down, itemizing the budget. And we can see that the COE would consume the, the biggest portion, which is 64 million, uh, constituting 71% of the overall. And other budget line items, uh, the material ones uh, would be for Auditor's remuneration is for the AG, 2.8 million. I'm just going to be naming the, uh, mentioning the ones which are above 2%. Uh, the next one will be computer and IT related. Around so, 2 you million. mean compensation of employees? Chair, I'm on slide number nine. Mm -hmm. uh, if this is visible, Chair, this is how it looks. This is the slide. Okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's an itemized slide. Uh, we, we are sharing the details account by account. So I'm just naming uh, the accounts that have got material amounts. Okay. It's auditor's remuneration. I'm, I'm, I'm starting auditor's remuneration, 2.8 million, constituting 3% of the overall budget. Uh, compensation of employees, 64.2 million, uh, constituting 71% of the overall budget. Computer servicing, computer services, uh, uh, 2 million, around 2% of the budget. Conferences and seminars, 
this is uh, the budget the budget line that uh, we, we was conceived before the lockdown, before the COVID-19 interventions. So in this budget that has been approved, uh, we've got uh, 2.1 million for conferences, conferences and seminars. The next material budget line item would be for office cleaning, maintenance, plants and security. Is, this is basically for the upkeep of the offices. Uh, cleaning offices, uh, where we've got to be paying for water and lights and the like, so 2.6 million or 30% of the budget. Uh, report writing because uh, our outputs, most of our outputs uh, culminates in reports that are printed. Uh, so we've got around uh, 2.5 million set aside for, for the reports. And uh, Next, uh, last but one, material amount is for travel, uh, local, and this is also on the basis of the assumption, uh, it's on the basis of uh, planning without lockdown or interventions from COVID. So, so travel for local trips was set at 4.6 million. Travel for overseas, 1.6 million. Those are the key material big ticket uh, line items that I'm mentioning. Uh, the rest is available for members uh, to peruse. Uh, chair, I think that is the takeaway from that particular slide. And Chairperson, that information being provided amounts to what the CGE budget is. The next slides are basically to uh, break down. Uh, we were called upon to break down the budget uh, in various other ways. And then uh, we have only indicated how it is being broken down per line item. Now we are going to be breaking it down per sub-program. The first, the first program is the main core service delivery program. If we look into the rightmost uh, block, we are indicating the departments. We've got communications, we've got provincial offices, and we've got line, line functions like uh, legal, research, and public education and information. So these are programs that we are saying that uh, they are directly connected to our core mandate. And what has been set aside from the 89.9 million, 51 million thereof have been set aside to, to fund these particular programs, these departments. So likewise, uh, minimize to or reduce to this particular service delivery uh, component or sub-program, we are also indicating on the left-hand side of the slide uh, the breakdown per line item. So it's for, for members to uh, also read and then we can take questions on that. What can be a takeaway from this particular slide is that uh, uh, if you look into compensation of employees on the left hand side block, that's 40 million. So from the overall organizational 64 million rand allocated, 40 million will be going to the core, will be funding employees who are at the call phase doing the core. So effectively, there is 63% of our compensation budget goes to uh, key, key human resources. And Chair, the next slide, doing the same. Uh, however, in this particular case, which is slide number 11, is for the commissioner program. Uh, as well, I think uh, the takeaway from this particular program is that uh, this, this is, this are money set aside in fulfillment of uh, what the CG Act requires. The CG Act makes provision for the appointment of commissioners and money has been set aside informed by our enabling legislation. So overall for the commissioners, for the, for the full financial year, 15 million rand have been set aside. And the details are left for members, uh, for reference by members. And the last uh, sub-program chair, it's on corporate services. Uh, corporate services, uh, units that make up 
corporate services are indicated. It's CEO, finance and administration, uh, human resources, information technology. Uh, the CEO program includes internal audit. Uh, the numbers are there. They include internal audit and sub. Maybe, sub, maybe sub. save all. Oh, let me cut you. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, because uh, the other things members can read and uh, they can also question where they don't understand. Uh, so I think, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. We have went, gone through the, 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 the financials and I'm sure members now, they are ready to ask you questions and you'll be able to, 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 to respond to the questions. Point taken, Chair, accepted. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Honorable members, uh, I'm sure you, you, you have gone through the report, you have read through the strategic uh, plan and the APP, and also the financials of, of CGE on how have they allocated uh, money according to programs. We have seen also that 71% uh, of the budget goes to uh, COE, which is uh, it is a concern. Um, and it's not uh, something that uh, we're not, uh, uh, as a committee, taking it for, for, for granted. We, we know what are, the, uh, what are your frustrations. You have limited budgets. And uh, also, uh, we are considering that government also is not having enough so that they can allocate uh, 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 budgets for departments and our entities adequately so. But I think uh, all of us, we, we, we understand, even us in parliament, the budget that is allocated is not adequate enough. And uh, but uh, all of us, nobody can say uh, no. We we don't know what is happening in the country now. All of us we understand what are the financial constraints constraints that we are faced with as a country. So, but uh, we'll see. I think honourable members, that's the report. Uh, there's a button where it says show off hand, you will need to click. Now, I said, Minister Antla, click any button. At the click, there's a hand. It click in, I'm calling. So, tell me how I'm going to But what I will request to members is that please go straight to the questions. For, 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 so that every member can get an opportunity to raise, uh, to ask a question, a clarity seeking questions. And uh, the commissioners and uh, the CEO and the CFO will be able to respond to your questions. So we are hoping that all commissioners will, will respond to um, um, our questions. Uh, but uh, Chair, I think that one also you need to deal with. Uh, because what we are going to deal with, uh, the members are going to raise questions. Chairperson, I'm so sorry. It's uh, um, Masiko. I don't know whether my iPad is the only one that doesn't have the button to, show, to, to, to raise hands, but I can't seem to find the button in my, in my uh, iPad. Okay, uh, you are noted. Thank you, Chair. Me too, Chair. Uh, Sorry, Chair. Sorry, Chair. Mam Kaula. Mam Sondi. Sorry, Chair. Honorable Sorry, Chair. Honorable Sheriff. Sorry, Chair. Uh, Honorable Mpiti. Sorry, Chair. Honorable Sondi. I mean, and the 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 Kaluku Kela Oguti Nam and the Nayole Patin Le Yok Pagamisa is and seven six pony. Honorable Stay 
Honorable Ngobo. Honorable Ngobo? Oh, you're only using iPads. Um, Honorable... When I found a chair. I've noted you. I've noted you. Mkweba? <clears throat> Masondo? Sharif first. Honorable Sharif. Uh, thank uh, you very much, Chair. Honorable Masiko will be the last. Thank you, Chair. May I proceed? No, you are not the first one, my darling. Oh, excuse me. The first one will be Mam Kaula. The only thing that I wanted to check with the 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 the, the, the commissioners and the CEO and a CFO, you know, I was looking at your your strategic uh, a plan where we are talking about legislative and policy changes. on how are you going to influence them? One, I just want to check with you. Are you aware of legislations or bills that have been brought to parliament that uh, you, you need to make inputs, especially the bills that are coming from Department of um, Justice, where they're dealing with the the sexual offense, uh, sexual amendments of the sexual offense uh, bill, and the other one they are dealing with the because i you know i read your report on the the the, the, the pol in terms of the policy and legislative uh, uh, um Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Dr. Talen, can you hear me? Small, 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 Ayana. I can hear you well. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you can just highlight. You know what is the problem? It's because honorable members, they have unmuted their mics. So once all of you, you unmute your mics, then it affects my mic. So what I will request you to do is to mute your mics, and then you'll unmute your mic when you speak. <laughs> All of you have got only two minutes. Okay. And Gibong and Salo, a my colleagues, Ami. Me no one than a Salo. Um, he's going to get to Okulumalangi. You are a man called Sinama Commissioner, as our Ketayo, Uta was good at the Lenink in Gaza and Miss Fazan. And the Fanana Luluta Balema Ligena was snanking and as we teen would Lomyang or Lower City E, snanking or would to unnamed sons of Kuluti Mali in Nan. And the now lending Patagambilla Slada, Yagutinja, Losna linking a strategic planning. 
Good in Yadog or twenty twenty two, twenty twenty one, so wins and got a clean and goes a shy for Yaguma bonds and in. Lana Guna, my case is shallow, a ang tinta and a man patagamdo. Lackinje, a ma case lawa obsugunyas or bandwis fazane, who told Tamakalab, I yield a court, got a mouth a fear of a court, our born umpumela wow. Lackinje case, ya same full in one oh eight. La Ogafa Kono Moon to Oa Bulala in Tobazan and Lini, Yabula and Engan, Ekinain. Lay your father a case ya cognac in the valley with the hamba bezak mean a calapan guy with a shallow fathers. On the still the man, Laman Mabe for Nabat, a bagabo shallaman, still Lumun to Sabonaga le hamba la. Wooting and Bellang and Bella. Gem yinitina um sabenzue to a no ma le commission as nayo, yin um sabenzuayo. A ya a ye yin king was was blandela la ma cases was wa begi. O gunya mutaba o lutinta as Mobang Tem you tana ma my queen. Sorry. Kwanda mundo pasa misai mo kuluma kono ut otim mm. And I'll see Oh, Tonisho, okay, Got a lot of tabled with the pillar of little pans. If one was good to come to Labis Baketa, you name seven swam no man come by your ranking of putty. He man no more than a bang a plan a betting go twenty twenty to twenty two twenty one. Conabas of Wenzel Camping King a man. Olunya Utabadi, low recognized. Paula Ipelile, and next person. Honorable Mpiti. Okay. Honorable Mpiti. Pity, um, you unmute your mic. Oh, thank you, Chair. I'm I'm struggling with network, so I'm I'm standing. So please, please uh, bear with me. I just have a few questions, uh, Chair. Uh, the first one just relates to the draft commissioner program that was was sent to us as a committee. There are just two issues that I wanted to to make a note before I get to my point. Um, the first one relates to the the issue of outcome and outputs, performance indicators, and out and targets. Um, the, the the first point there that comes about is the submissions that are being referred to uh, that CGE would be doing, um, and there's a number of them that they speaks to the Sexual Offences uh, Act and a number of other submissions that they refer to. But in quarter one, in, sorry, in quarter two and quarter three and quarter four, they they just mention a submission. So I just wanted some clarity. What are those submissions so that it's clear on that document so we, we are able to understand what is being done in that quarter? And, and, and also I wanted to say that in terms of uh, a process plan, what exactly are these submissions supposed to be achieving? So if we are making a submission on, on, on a particular policy uh, uh, initiative, how is it going to be guided process-wise to get it there? Because we can make a submission, but to make a submission does not necessarily mean that an impact is actually being made. And then just going forward on, on, on that same, uh, on the second page of that uh, document we were sent uh, on the matter of influence to legislative and policy changes. Um, there's a note there about attending uh, meetings with uh, the parliamentary committee on an effort to, to influence uh, policy directions. 
And so I, I wanted to say that I, I really feel that this is not sufficient enough because to attend a meeting with the portfolio committee is what is required uh, in terms of, you know, the, legislatively. That is what is required. So I don't see that as a measure that is reimagining the role of commissioners or reimagining the job that is supposed to be done by commissioners when it comes to, to speaking to the issues that are facing people um, in our communities. So to attend a meeting, uh, I argue, is not enough uh, to, to deal with some of the issues of, of influencing policy in a meaningful way. Um, and so the point that I'm trying to make, Chair, to close is this, is that what is clear to me is that there, there has not been much thinking about how commissioners play a role within the strategic objectives of the of CGE in the next five years. I don't think that has been clearly articulated enough. When you look at the, the plan, uh, commissioners are only mentioned 16 times. Um, that speaks to a lack of clarity as to their roles in achieving the strategic objectives of CGE, but also to uh, a lack of understanding of what exactly besides oversight of committees uh, that they are that they are, are looking after is their role in the provincial and national uh, domain of of the CGE and exactly how do they work to to achieve the objectives of the CGE? So I thought those those points, chair, were very important to be able to speak to. And also, just a quick question, if it's possible, on case management. What is the update? I welcome the fact that it has moved into an online electronic system which is a very positive step uh, in, in being able to manage the cases. However, um, can the committee be made, uh, the summary of these cases be made available to the committee so that we are able to track where exactly some of these cases are so that we are also able to, to provide oversight on that. And just to say that commissioners are, of course, uh, you know, elected or selected through the process of parliament. So therefore, if their mandates and their job descriptions are unclear, then we cannot be able to conduct uh, adequate oversight over them. Thank you very much, Chair. In fact, uh, uh, Honorable Piti, you were talking to the five key thematic areas uh, 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 that they have of gender and substantive equality, gender-based violence, women's economic empowerment, gender and health, culture and tradition, tradition and religion. That uh, how have they delegated themselves in terms of dealing with the, the, these thematic areas as commissioners? Uh, Honorable Sonti. Mam Sonti. Chair. Yeah, Mama. Uh, Chair Person. Yeah, Mama. Uh, Mina, I found this on Gena Kona. This on Gena Kulenda Ba. Eh, Yoko Chwala. Uh, <laughs> Then this is our target chapters in a lender by Yok Twala. Ukuti lenda by Yok Twala, Kakuru Kakulu, rural areas. A into upper MB, a Ekufanele or Gokba Idenayo, Kutela Pesqua Yokakulu and the Ia Pelis or Ia Apolish. So on the Funuk on the Gango upper commissioners, Uguchi by Tata by Begapi, or else Bazani, Leganga Gananina or Gokubana, Umkanga, Toa Lento and the Gayo, Yokuchala Gabantana Betu, Ibe Ia Sela or Ia Pela. Eh, August being a footy is Kalazo and Dina, so Quasima, Lisi Kulumangazo, as Guluganga, Lena, a compensation of, of the employees, Ingati in Kuluga Kulu, even now King and the West Yays in the Ona Lemali Engang over Ingaga. More especially, second Ale COVID nineteen, you can go like a Saleo Upper Emsas Africa, and goes to Chapesin. Mike Uti Ingan Ganja, the Mamsunt. 
Ntambe ba masa. Ani ti uti imali allocate we for the compensation of employees. Compensation of employees yet. Yeah, uti. It's too much. So in other words, you are saying banga ba patal. Baba ba patal ego te iseska yaba ninka kud. Oh. It's too much. Oh, Mara, in King Econ, Uti, Angishbana, my offices in all the provinces. Yes. Yes, the Fanege Baba Cocail, Abantaba Seven Zagloso in Dow, Foot with Fanege, if Abasaba Cocail, Tina Foot is up in the sky. City as told Abasabinzi, Loma Office Swabo, as Sema Province in. So I'm tapping in King A to Songe, Oguti, Tambe Bangasa Galaranja. Mara, Angek. Okoto angeke sikuwa zguti. Siti mabanga ba kukili. Ngoba, maseba yes. fwanele gule skate siku so manchi. O, abo mama, abo ntwana, e, baya shukumeze kakakulu. So, kubale gilu guti nabo, abo sebe nzi wabe kona, abo konu ba kukili. Mara, yes. so, i pointi ako, it's, 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 it's noted, because you are also raising a concern on the money uh, that is allocated for the compensation of employees. Yes, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Um, you. On, honorable stay. I think and the other thing, Mam Sonti, there was where they are talking about Duke Twala. Uh, uh, my commissioners must, must respond to that one. Honorable uh, stay. Stay and mute your mic. In the out outreach programs that the Commission has, in partnership with the Department of Education, Basic Education and Higher Education, what outreach programs does the Commission have with the mentioned institution of learning to educate, promote, and empower young women about gender equity, gender-based violence, and gender rights as gender-based violence and femicide affects women and girls across all ages. And secondly, does the commission include the empowerment of men, particularly young men in gender-based violence and femicide related issues as many incidents against women are done by men? If so, what programs are in place? And then thirdly, uh, Sona spoke of the empowerment of women in sectors of, of the economy. May the Commission provide insights and an update on its role in advocacy and the support of women in farming and allocation of land to women. Yabong. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Honorable Ngoba. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, my first question is on the CGE submissions on new proposed legislation. So what I would like to know is if there are any bills at the moment that the CGE is going to be making submissions on, and if there are any, I would like to also to know if what those bills will be. And my second question is on strategic objective two, and where the commission talks about uh, support materials for education and information programs for the year on gender-based violence, gender mainstreaming, harmful traditional practices, etc. And what I would like to know there is if they, these support materials are going to be disability-friendly, meaning if they will also be catering for persons with disabilities. So if they, people with disabilities in South Africa will also be able to access these documents. And I also welcome the fact that these um, materials will be uh, translated in many different vernacular languages. So just a, a concern on persons with disabilities. And my last question is on HR. And what I would like to know there is if the commission has uh, the current critical vacancies and what are those vacancies? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Honorable Ngobo. Uh... Honorable Masondo. Honorable Masondo. 
Honorable Sheriff. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, first, I want to just thank the CGE and especially Dr. Ntabi Singh um, for always being available when help is needed uh, from my side. So thank you very much for that. Um, I just want to raise a quick concern on shelters and substance abuse. Um, Chairperson, if you remember, I was dealing with a case last week and what I found was that no shelters wanted to take this 21-year-old girl in because she had a um, crystal meth addiction. And it became very frustrating for me to find her a place of shelter because we needed to take her out of her house where her, where her father was, was abusing her. And we couldn't find a place that would take her. We called all the government departments. We called every single place we could and shelters just refused to take her because she has a sub substance abuse. Now, I get, the, I get the logic behind it, but I just think perhaps uh, we can look at seeing what alternative interventions we can put in place to, uh, help, to help young women uh, that need to get out of abusive households but have substance abuse issues. Mm, Chairperson, in regards to the presentation uh, that was given today, um, investigative hearings and reports by the CGE is, is very good and it's it's needed in order to hold government and departments accountable. Um, and it speaks about um, systematic issues by decision makers uh, that would need to be re resolved as part of your um, as part of the APP. Now I wanted to find out what exactly is the CGE looking for to be resolved from these systematic issues by the decision makers? And also, how does the CGE track these recommendations when being actioned? So is there a tracking system, a mechanism that the CGE uses um, to record these recommendations and then uh, monitor if it's been implemented or not? Um, Chairperson, in terms of um, uh, SO1, um, the gender mainstreaming, the CGE speaks about reviving gender mainstreaming. Um, I want to find out what the plan is to work in collaboration with Parliament um, to do this, because as you know, Chairperson, we have the NCOP, we have the Women's Caucus, we have the Department, all of these different uh, levels are doing the same work. So where does CGE then fit into it? Um, I would then also like to find out um, the last time we spoke with CGE, CGE mentioned the difficulties that they were having with the Interim Steering Committee on Gender-Based Violence and Femicide. Given the APP and looking at the targets, um, it speaks about doing oversight and putting a report together for the NSP and the ERAP during quarter one, which is now, April to, to, uh, to June. Um, and I wanted to find out, um, has the CGE been granted access um, to these documents and have they been granted access um, to the decision makers in order to get information for their for their report um, that they want to put together. Um, Chairperson, I don't want to take too much of the time, but I do want to just ask one more question. Um, when in, in uh, SO2, uh, one of the targets says nine uh, gender machinery interventions will happen per quarter. What exactly do these interventions look like? Um, and can you give us some examples of that? Um, Chair, I'll leave it there for now. Uh, but if we get a second bite, I'd like to come back. Thank you very much. Yeah, I want to add uh, one uh, with regards to the SDGs. I don't see any activity planned for the outer years, but for this financial year, it, the, there is. But uh, on stakeholder engagements, there is nothing. So maybe if you can read your report and tell us why are you not having any planned uh, activity in the outer years, but you are only focusing on this uh, financial year only. Uh, Honorable Mkweba. I got a message that you were out, uh, but you were on the list. We are still not sure. Masondo, whoever you will speak after Mas Honorable Masondo. Ne? Thank you, Chaperson. Uh, I would like to start by welcoming the report from the CGE relative to the mission of the commission which includes monitoring and evaluation does the commission include programs within within its app that pro, that monitor and evaluate SAPS employees trained to deal with gender-based violence 
and sexual assault survivors and ensure that adequate support is provided to victims when reporting cases relating to these matters. The second one, does the commission evaluate whether SAPS stations are capacitated in providing support to GPV and sexual assaulted victim survivors, particularly in rural areas? Thank you, Chairperson. What do you say uh, with regard to the last question that you have raised? Uh, it's important that after you have consolidated the statistics from the police, uh, social development, and from Lifeline, what we, the, our interest also is with regards to the cases from the justice department. If you can also just check for us or monitor whether the cases that they are dealing with on GPV and femicide, they have uh, they've finalized all of them or they are still outstanding. Because some of the cases, they've been long there for more than two years. So if maybe even that one, when you're in doing monitoring, you can also check that for us. Honorable Mkweba. Uh, thank you, Chair. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, Chair. Yeah. Thanks, Chair and uh, honorable members. Let me welcome the presentation by the CGE. In fact, I've got only two questions. You know, I've just read the um, the SONA 2020 and uh, just peruse, you know, the, the manifesto priorities. My first question to the CGE, because I understand in their slide, there's an, a, a slide that speaks to issues of partnership with civil societies, the traditional, lead, the traditional and community leaders, does the commission have programs such as mentorship programs? Because I know when they were presenting, they spoke of circumcision in rural areas. Does the, does the commission have programs such as mentorship programs aimed at young boys and men coming from single women headed households that provide and serve as a role models and mentors to young boys and men in communities, especially in rural areas. And the second question to the CGE is on issues of, um, you know, how does the commission, because I understand the, 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 the chair in, in her presentation spoke of uh, the budget issues where they can't reach some of the deep rural areas in our country. But then my question is very simple. How does the commission ensure that within reach in outskirts areas such as rural areas other than radio programming, particularly in areas that are not in closer proximity to Tutuzela centers in rural areas, be it in the KZN, Eastern Cape, Limpompo, Mpumalanga, or in the Northwest, where there are deep, deep rural areas. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. I think uh, to add on that one, yeah, of Honorable Mkweba, in reaching out to people in the rural areas, isn't it time that uh, maybe you need to consider billboards? So that you can write uh, 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 messages about uh, how wh what is your mandate as CGE, and but maybe write even in different languages in all provinces. In the Eastern Cape, you'll use the language that they are using. KZN, you'll use that. Vembe, in Vembe, you'll use Ven Venda, the language 
that our people are, are, are speaking. Because if you are going to write your billboards in English, it's not going to achieve the intended intention. But uh, 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 when you, are, you have placed billboards, at least even those that are not educated, but the children or the neighborhood, those that uh, at least they have, who are, who are able to read and write, they can read those billboards and try to explain to communities there in the rural areas. Because sometimes we'll take it that uh, everybody is listening to radio, but only to find that in the remote areas, they don't have even having radios and, and, and the televisions. You know, people are very poor. So sometimes when we, we plan, we also need to consider some of the uh, social uh, 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 economic uh, challenges that our people are faced with. It's not everybody that is having a radio. So we must try and come up with strategies that, uh, 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 because even in, 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 in Bezos, you know, long time ago, other people, uh, 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 they were using Izin Bezos talking to Amakosi and Izinduna and so on, just to go and talk to those communities in those areas. But I'm not sure if you also do the Izin Bezos. Let's go to Honorable Masiko. Honorable Masiko, you're the last one. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Greetings to yourself. Greetings to members and, and, and um, colleagues and everyone. Chairperson, I think firstly, one must um, welcome the reports that we've received from the CGE and also note, uh, uh, Chairperson, that um, we have noted uh, uh, positively the improved performance of, of CGE across the, the last five years. And we can see that there is an increased public awareness as well as the outreach programs that are done by CGE. We know them, Chairperson, and I think it's work that is impressive that as a committee we must be able to, 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 to thank them for it. But also pass gratitude, Chairperson, as Honorable Sharif had mentioned, the availability of commissioners when we need them. Because true to your word, Chairperson, there is a lot that is happening on the ground and um, a, a response that is always on time is always appreciated. We must thank that. Uh, it calls for us, Chairperson, as a committee, to also continue then advocating for additional resources for, G for CGE to continue performing their work. As you had mentioned, that it is a struggle that in terms of the limited resources that they are having uh, from, from, from the head office across to provinces, it does limit their scope of work. So I think as a, as a committee, we should always, at every opportunity that we are getting, continue to advocate for additional resources, Chairperson. Uh, moving to, 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 to the, the strategic op uh, plans and um, the APP, I think uh, 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 honorable members have covered me on a number of issues. In terms of the strategic ob objective number one, you have noted the issue of uh, whether or not in terms of the provincial legislatures, do they also monitor the legislation that passes through there? But I think what is important, Chairperson, that we should also link is then that if, if they do, what then becomes the work of the commissioners in relation to monitoring of the provincial uh, legislation or the legislation that passes through the provincial legislators. Also on strategic ob objective number one, Chair, I think there's a lot that is said about gender transformation, both in public and the private sector. But I think for us, it's, it's important to note that it's actually broad public sector is huge, the private sector, the sector is equally enormous. What is important then is to then ask them what specifically are they referring to which private sector departments and which pub public private sector uh, 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 bodies are they looking to, 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 to monitor or are they targeting uh, 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 during this, 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 this period. In terms of support materials, which is strategic objective number two, what is important for us, Chairperson, is that we know that, especially during this COVID-19 period, digital uh, or, or maybe, uh, what do you call it? Um, okay, well, digital platforms have been used to a greater extent. So now, is CGE planning in terms of support materials? Because we know that 
they have mentioned that they will be using mainly paper. And we're now moving towards a paperless a, 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 a South Africa. And uh, are they then planning to use any of the visual platforms uh, in order to, to, to do um, or disseminate information? Um, in terms of gender mainstreaming, I think the same applies because it, it, it refers to gender mainstreaming in public and private institutions. It's also brought, uh, Chairperson, I think we need to be specific as to which private, which public institutions are we speaking about. Um, social media campaigns, which are the social media campaigns have they identified? And uh, how then do we address issues of limited data that, we, that is experienced, especially by our women who do not have resources as well as young people? Um, the monitoring uh, a chairperson in terms of gender uh, a responsive budgeting framework, we know that the department has indicated that the, the gender responsive uh, budgeting framework has been disseminated to departments. How will CGE be monitoring this framework? Uh, lastly, chairperson, uh, in terms of strategic objective four, it is noted that they are, they are going to be key strategic partnerships as well as agreements. Which, which are these strategic partners uh, that CGE has, has identified? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable Masigo. You know, um, our other interest was, I, I wanted us to hear from the commissioners, especially Dr. Taleng, on the issue of reproductive health. You know, now during the lockdown, and COVID, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what was happening with regards to women who wanted to terminate pregnancy and, and, and family planning. Maybe if you can share what experiences have uh, uh, did you encountered during this lockdown uh, uh, period. But also with Babu Potha, I would we have interest also to know and how is uh, that program of men and boys is a, 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 a yielding results because I think that program, Babu Potha, you need to a, 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 a promote it more and more and more. You know, it must not now be isolated somewhere. It must be known everywhere by every boy, every man, because during lockdown now we have seen what is happening. So that means we are not reaching out. It's, it, we are doing it, but I'm not. I'm, sure, I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure whether we are able to reach out to the people who must just uh, participate in in that in, in that program that you are leading. Over to you, uh, Chairperson. Uh, you'll then tell us uh, uh, how are you going to structure your your response. Tamara. You know, all good CTE has got a lot of expertise. So, uh, advocate in Tabi saying, you must also assist on legal issues. Women, their cases are being thrown out by court. <laughs> I don't know where is your chairperson. Uh, uh, I wanted to respond. I don't know if. Um, Chair? Oh, sorry. I'm here, chairperson. I've been doing a lineup of uh, commissioners to respond on questions. Oh, so I was going to assist quickly there. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think starting from the last questions asked. I would request Commissioner Borda to respond on the program of men and boys, but in his response to also just include information or a response on the question that was asked about a program, mentorship programs in rural areas, because I think these mentorship programs include men and boys as well, the work that he's been doing. I would request Dr. Tlaleng to respond on the experiences on SRHR. And um, um, I think um, 
Commissioner Moliko to respond on issues of monitoring and evaluation, tracking systems, and tracking recommendations. Uh, I would request uh, Commissioner uh, Mufukeng as well, just to respond on budget deficiencies, limited resources to reach rural areas. Commissioner Sidiko, uh, if he can respond on the HR uh, issues, the current critical vacancies together with the Secretariat, because he's the chair of the HR committee. So he will assist in there. Commissioner Ntadi Singh, Sipanya Mukhale, and Commissioner Dey to respond, as well as CEO, to respond on the bills that the CGE will be submitting or uh, the, the bills that have been submitted. I would request Commissioner Ntuli, uh, Joe Badla, and Commissioner uh, Mutupi to respond on the understanding of the role of commissioners in terms of making sure that the, the five key thematic areas are covered. Um, and last but not least, I think uh, Commissioner Yes, Sipanya will also just talk about how we influence legislations um, and bills that go to Parliament, particularly our participation at the DOJ, Department of Justice um, 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 a Portfolio Committee. Uh, last but not least, uh, Chair, I would request uh, Commissioner O'Hara to respond on the, and Commissioner Sipanya to respond on the issue of Ugutwala. Uh, which needs to be abolished, but also Commissioner O'Hara to respond on the monitoring of provincial legislations. Thank you very much, Chair. Kashifa, please talk to IT people because they were the ones who were uh, uh, messing us with regards to uh, 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 the, the, the network or whatsoever. So it, it can be our problem that our time is we are running out of time. A short person, can I go first? Chair person, can I go first? Commissioner, yes, Commissioner Boda, uh, go ahead. I think the lineup was according to that. You can go. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Chair person uh, of the Portfolio Committee, thank you so much for the opportunity. And honorable members, thank you also for affording us this opportunity. I, Chair person, uh, I want to say that uh, the issue of working with men and boys in, in the nine provinces that we have has not been uh, solidified. What do I mean by that is that, Chairperson, we have not uh, done much uh, that in all our offices, we, we don't have, as I speak, uh, male champions that are found in our offices that deals with um, um, GBV as men. Um, we, what we, we normally do is, as we do the legal clinics, our education, our education programs, we, we in fact, we, we, we factor in working with men and boys in those spaces. Now, that's, that's how the, one, one of the ways we're dealing with it in terms of our legal clinics and our education officers. But I, I think that chairperson and honorable members, we have a huge uh, challenge with resources in, 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 in our organization, as you all know and are aware. But having have said that, Chairperson, working together with partners, and in this instant, Chair and Honorable Members, the South African Police Service is a critical partnership. Now, Chair, in your opening, you, you alluded to problems that are found in, the, in, in different police stations. What I, I think in, in my past life, what, what, what used to work well was where you have in different police stations, where you have men's forums that are dedicated in understanding uh, what, what a GBV is all about. Now, that, Chairperson, has not, has not been cemented in all the provinces, in the, in, in the nine provinces that we're working with. So I'm saying that we would also want to urge the portfolio committee, in fact, working with uh, the other uh, police portfolio committee to assist us in ensuring that the the police themselves 
they take issues of gender equality and working with men and boys as a, a top priority. Because what, hap what happens at, at Chaperson and honorable members is that you, the police, their response uh, is in fact reflective of what is happening generally in society. It is, it is in fact, in most cases, men who are in blue, who are in the front line, who will frustrate women because they themselves are abusers, they themselves are manifestations of patriarchy. So there is this pushback from them, Chairperson, honorable members. A, a lot of policemen and women, you'd find that they, in fact, policemen, have, uh, they, are, uh, they kill their partners uh, in different ways, different forms, mainly because they don't even believe in the work of the Commission for Gender Equality. So I'm saying that we would want to appeal to you to assist us that we have presence in the different po police stations and uh, working with the minister, with the portfolio committee of the of police uh, would go a long way in ensuring that we, we do achieve that. But having have said that, there's a, there's, the, the chairperson of the CGE, Co Commissioner Mat Matebula, has had together with the deputy chairperson, the CEO, they had a meeting with um, the, the Norwegian embassy that uh, has shown interest in supporting our work with men and boys. I think it's, it's when we do have these resources, would be able, Chairperson, to, to roll out programs that are not just a ticket box. I don't think that, Chairperson and honorable members, we want uh, your calendar events, however important they are, but they are not sustainable. Uh, we, we, we want, and I hope that, with that engagement with the Norwegian embassy, we would be able to, in fact, make sure that we even get to schools. Chair, imagine, and, and um, honorable members, imagine what would happen if... When I'm going to... Moment, I think you, you need, uh, uh, we need uh, enough time so that you can come and make it, uh, your, your input and presentation to the portfolio committee. Because what you are presenting now, it's, the, it's most, more important for us. Uh, because but, now I'm afraid that you, our time, it's not going to allow all the commissioners to respond. Well, but well I, thank you, Chair. I'll, I'll just stop by saying, Chairperson, it is our work is mostly more effective if, when we work with partners. And uh, I, I want to respectfully agree with you that we would need a more uh, in-depth uh, discussions around working with men and boys because Chairperson, we're dealing with patriarchy, which is entrenched for many, many centuries throughout the world. It's worse in our country with religion and culture. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay. Honorable, uh, next uh, Commissioner, I think it's Honorable uh, Commissioner Muliko. Thank you. Uh, good evening, honorable members. Uh, greetings, uh, honorable chair uh, and colleagues. I'm answering very quickly the issue that was requested on the tracking uh, by honorable Sharif. Uh, also, it touches on honorable Kaula's question on exactly what are we doing. I think it also um, hits on whether we have a tracking and how do we track. Uh, honorable members, we have developed what is called a monitoring and tracking tool in the organization as commissioners. It was a process. What we did was we created uh, indices that we believed are important to look at in the different sectors in order to oversee departments' progress on the efficacy of implementation of our reports. We also highlighted whether or not they've implemented our recommendations. We need to be honest on ourselves to say, have they implemented the recommendation or are they still in progress or are they just sitting gathering dust? We need to be honest. So we created the tracking tool. Uh, what we have made sure as commissioners is to not overstep our boundaries with management. We have allowed then for management to take the report and to implement a retrospectively. So we're looking backwards. CGE has over hundreds of reports they've done. CGE has seen that there's very little movement on some of the reports, on some of the work. So we will get from the CEO in this first quarter, it's now in the APP, now that we've developed the tool, how far is the different departments on the research outcome, some of the 
actual reports we've done in implementing the recommendations. Honorable Kabul is correct to say, how far, what exactly are you doing? The only way we need to prove is to use these me measures and indices. Otherwise, it will be very difficult for us to alienate uh, only based on what we are saying at events and the like. So we are saying that we do need to have an evidence-based type of approach and use research to uh, try and assist us in this regard. I think the second issue we are saying, looking broader, we've discussed in plenary issue of a GBV index. What does this mean? It means looking at a provincial level, what is the incidence of GBV? How are COPs relating? Is their budget going? We need to monitor this, but you need to have a tool. So we have said and proposed this in, 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 the, in the plenary. However, again, we then give a directive in the APP and we are hoping Secretariat will then come on board to execute. Thank you, honorable members. I think there are works in progress. We'll, want, we'll call you again to come and present the full plan all the, the, the tool that you're having, you'll have to come back and present it to the portfolio committee so that we can also assess and uh, uh, whether yourselves as CGE, you are implementing what you said you are going to implement or what. We are going to call you as soon as possible. We are going to schedule another meeting specifically for you. I think the next one is Dr. Uh, 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 by the way, is Dr. Ntabi saying it's Dr. Tlaleng, Dr. Tlaleng. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and to the honorable members. So during the lockdown period specifically, we were undergoing and undertook surveillance and monitoring of different um, difficulties that people were experiencing. In a nutshell, some of the problems ranged from um, lack of access to contraception of choice. Many women were told that there was either a stock out or simply what they were using previously is no longer available. Some of them were afforded condoms and some not. Um, we had issues of access to antiretroviral treatment in some of the clinics. And we've also had an issue, of course, of food because a lot of the medications and chronic treatments that people are taking, whether it's diabetic or hypertension, including HIV treatment, people still need um, food to be able to keep up with their treatment. So the issue of food security over lockdown, um, you know, became an issue uh, of concern as well. What we did do immediately in terms of um, gauging our, our sort of um, intervention, Gauteng Department of Health was one such department where we did act immediately, um, where we had specific complaints. We know the one that was covered in the media around Mami Lodi Hospital and the overcrowding in the maternity wards. We also intervened um, at that level provincially regarding the issue of Kalafong Hospital and the waiting periods of up to four to six weeks um, just for an assessment um, for termination. We also um, received sporadic um, reports around clinics in Soweto um, as well as Orange Farm around um, lack of access to sexual and productive health services. And in fact, what we were able to then do is the head of department of Gauteng since issued an amended circular to all his departments, further reiterating access to SRHR, firstly as an essential service, um, but also to be explicit in what they mean by sexual and reproductive health um, rights services. Uh, the monitoring is continuing. We do have cases that are more strategically for us as the commission building on a bigger case um, where it will either follow an investigative hearing or we will then, um, when necessary, call on each department to then um, answer specific questions. We do have a concern right now in terms of mental health and the safety of healthcare professionals across the country. And we are currently working um, on, a, on a communication with the Department of Health, as well as the presidency and the and the TASK um, team that's been tasked with COVID response. Um, we do know that in terms of the shelters, the commission last year held investigative hearings and we received progress reports from DSD, SAPS, NPA, Department of Justice and several um, civil society organizations. And the difficulty is that at the moment, drug addiction and substance abuse is viewed within a criminal justice system um, uh, um, um, as opposed to a health issue. 
And so you find that shelters are then filtering people who they admit into shelters and they don't want to take people who have a drug addiction or substance abuse, primarily because of the stigma, but also because of the criminalization. So how we react to people who are on drugs or have um, substance abuse issues, it's not around health and rehabilitation and immediate assessment of, of danger. It's more of a criminal justice system. And that's why you find the difficulties with access in shelter. The same would be the uh, with, with transgender uh, population, where a lot of women who, who are transgender cannot access hormones. Um, they are unable to then adequately fit in in the society. And so their mental health is at the moment quite compromised, but they also get excluded from shelters. And these are the things that we brought up on our progress um, hearings last year to say that there needs to be a standardized way in which DSD defines shelter, but also who it takes into the shelter. And the issue of discrimination in policy is very important because people will say, well, I'm following policy. But if policy itself is discriminatory, um, that's where our work comes in, in terms of advising, lobbying for those changes to happen. And I think I will end right here. But just to say that our surveillance is continuing. There are different hotspots around SRHR. And where possible, we do immediately react. Um, and intervene and we will um, carry on. And just the issue of the shelter and substance abuse, there are other vulnerabilities and other different people who are excluded, which we are still working um, very hard on ensuring that we can Im have impact on policy, but standardize um, shelters and what it is that they offer um, okay. and their admission policy. Even yourself, uh, we will need a, a more detailed re report uh, because we can see that you need to give us more information so that you can see uh, uh, what is it that you are going to do as the portfolio committee. Uh, uh, advocate in type saying. In type saying, unmute your mic. Yeah, in type saying, un unmute your mic. Are you using a, a laptop? Yeah. 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 Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Chair, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity and thanks to the entire uh, portfolio committee. I am part of the legal subcommittee, which basically does a lot of the actual work. Uh, but the CEO, we've just coordinated behind the scenes. She will give us a list of the legislation that we've worked uh, on. But I have uh, worked with uh, on a number of projects. The first one is actually the recognition of customary marriages campaign that we are about to embark on. And it's quite a critical one because we're hoping to uh, um, partner with Pick and Pay. In fact, they are waiting on us that are keen to do it because, uh, you know, over the years in my other work, I have realized that women are, are, are I don't even know their rights with regards to customary marriages. The fact that they've got to give consent, the fact that they, they, they can benefit when their spouse dies, you know, all of those sorts of things. So we are hoping to, to, to run with that project. We're going to be starting in the Eastern Cape and Free State with some of the uh, pick and pays in those areas that are in the rural areas where we can use the shop floor with some of the shop floor leadership to educate them and encourage them to register their marriage. Because once you have registered and you've got that marriage certificate, then you can uh, benefit, you know. And then this way, I hope it will be a pilot that we can take to other places. But the other thing that uh, uh, we have planned for September Heritage Month, uh, deliberately so, is the Mafuma Hadi Dialogue, which we are hoping will start once again in the Free State to dialogue with Mafuma had, we, who are the spouses of the chiefs about what role they can play to work with us to, to, to bring down patriarchy and, and hopefully have an impact on your GBV and, and, and other things. But this one is still in paper form. It is the, the, the concept paper is being reviewed by peers, but it is a, a vision that has actually been uh, adopted at the last plenary. Uh, not so long ago, Chair, we had 52 women from the uh, um, from KZN who had complained about their payouts from SARS as widows, where SARS was actually 
uh, taxing them to a point where they're left with nothing and go back to poverty, but this time without a supporting spouse. And we are also in the process where we are going to SARS and say, let us look at these exemptions. We're excited about this because we're hoping with Treasury and SARS and everyone, we may end up with this as a formalized exemption uh, that becomes legislation where women who are at a certain age with certain responsibilities do not have their, their, their uh, uh, insurance payouts and all of that text in a particular way like normal people. So that will also have a huge impact on people who in the long run end up being um, uh, single parents. Then yeah, we yeah, have... yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Even yes. single parents are right. Yes. Then, mm. Chair, I have been working with uh, the, our chair on the issue of Ukutwala. We, um, it's actually long overdue because I started it with one of the previous uh, commissioners who left. We are hoping that we will go into that area uh, of Ukutwala. The situation is dire. There are young girls who actually, you know, cannot go to school anymore or those who, as you know, go to school with the long dresses because they are now wives. And it is an urgent, urgent matter that we, we would like to, to deal with. And we are hoping with that, I think it will have an impact on a whole lot of other things, including the issue of raping of adults. We have identified it. We have raised it at a number of occasions. Our chair has actually raised it at one of the uh, 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 platforms where we talk, we're talking about the issue of Ukuchisa Ifuta, when people come out of Kolibulong and then they run rampage rapey. And I think this is, this is where it is coming from. And it's, it's linked to Ukutwala and everything. So I, I, I'm in that area, legal aspects, and hopefully, you know, out of that, we will at least have, have an impact. And I'm quite excited about what has been planned thus far. Some of the things I think uh, CEO will do. Seapuna Nawe. Uzo pinda usikeze report epelele uzo stela ogoti niti ni because you've got good plans but I don't know what you ni zenza ni nisfaga under the carpet. Commissioner Tobata, Tobata, where's Tobata? Commissioner Tobata. Thank you, thank you very much, Chair. I was struggling to unmute. Thank yes. you very much. New yes, thank you. You. Yes. yes, thank you very yes. much. Thank you very much, Chair. And also let me appreciate the opportunity to respond. Yeah, our role as commissioners starts with the APP. Everything that is reflected in the APP of the Commission for Gender Equality we are fully involved with it and we are part of implementing it because we are the governance as far as the implementation is concerned. So with the APP, we provide strategic leadership and guidance as expected. And our role also goes down to provinces, whereas whatever plan that each province has, which is aligned to the APP, as the commissioner responsible for that particular province, you are fully involved in such activities. But when we sit now as commissioners, we realize that as much as we are responsible for the APP, we need to come up now with a commissioner's program that looks not only nationally, but at the same time with work in the provinces. Because when you look at the challenges that we have as far as gender equity and gender equality are concerned, some of these challenges need what we call a high level intervention. And it's only commissioners that can come into the space and be involved as far as where high level interventions are needed. Then when you look at our plan as commissioners, the program, Somewhere we are talking about issues of legislation. We have a responsibility to influence legislation. And we also realize that another thing that is key chairperson 
I think it's not for the first time that it's being raised. The lack of a national gender policy that we need to have as a country, that is very key. Because without the national gender policy as a country, we cannot put pressure in the private sector. With public sector, it's manageable because they are within the, the working relationship we can influence. So the issue of a national policy is very important. So issues of, of policies, we need to zoom in and see that is there a, the, the required gender element within? Is there a way where we can avoid things like gender discrimination? Is there an element of gender equity? Is there an element of gender equality? Are our policies mainstream in such a way that they are able to have an impact and change the status? Now, if I you a gender policy as a country we don't have, that means, Nani, you must initiate it. Definitely, Chair. Nani, you must initiate it, and you don't have it in your strategic plan. So how do you raise it when you don't have it in your uh, in your strategic plan as a pri priority? So you'll have to come in the next meeting, you'll have to tell us. Uh, on, uh, Co Commissioner Mazibuko, we are going to have a second meeting, a meeting with you guys, uh, 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 CGE. Commissioner Mazibuko. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, and thank you very much for the exposure. Mine is to answer questions on disability. Disability in this country is still discriminated upon where you find women can talk about issues that pertains to women, but still at the end of their discussions, then they think of disabled women. Yes, there is no act or a bill on disability. We are working very hard. We are working very hard to educate. There were two questions on how are the, 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 the pamphlets or the, the legislation is going to happen for disabled people. There is no budget, Chair. As uh, Umamo would have to be complaining about the budget that is given to our salaries, when you deal with disabled Why people- Why don't you work with the Department of Women? Chair, we are working with them. They themselves, they have no staff. They themselves, they have only two people who are looking after disability. CGE itself doesn't have any pamphlets which are brailed. Yes, our car, our, our, we have braille. That is very expensive. It's not budgeted for. A sign interpreter. Why is it not in your strategic course. plan? Chair, it, 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 it has going to be looked upon to say this is the issues that we look as CGE. Issues of disability come as an afterthought. But what I want to answer is to say the, uh, the, the hearings is where we discuss with public and private. We go to the retailers and we go to uh, government departments where we get people. The issue of the 7%, government itself has not employed the 7% of disabled people. There's very shops, they don't employ people with disabilities. Issues of disability in this country are very difficult. And during the COVID incident, women with disabilities are not looked after because when you are a, a wheelchair person, you have to get to a certain point where you will be remembered. But it is during now as disabled people that we're seeing, and with my participation fully with the help of my colleagues in the CGE to say, where are disabled women? Where are we going to see that? Mm -hmm. It is now coming to power. As we talk, Chair. We are going to call you. you are, we are going to call you so that uh, you can give us a full report on that one, so that you can know as the uh, uh, portfolio committee what needs to be done by us as lawmakers. Mam O'Hara? Before I go away, Chair, yeah. that I can, before I can, you can go away, go okay. and look at the disabled people around your area. Have those people being looked after? Then by the time I come back, 
you will be knowing how many, because disability is not a one size fits all. Yeah. There are various numbers of disability in this yeah. country. It's not only a wheelchair and a no, white cane. Thank you, Chair. It's true. In fact, I met with the organization, prof, a profession, academics. I, I had a meeting with them uh, regarding the issues of disabled people. Mam Ohara no Sidike, Faragani shared in one minute, one minute. Unmute, Mam Ohara, unmute your mic. Unmute your mic. Hello? Yes. Hey, fourth industrial revolution. <laughs> uh, Chairperson, what I can say Kihore, it's work in progress because I'm allocated housing and obviously I need to we need to do some groundwork in terms of what the legislation is that we have to be focusing on. But le that legislation will actually be within the thematic areas that we have relating to about dom domestic violence, but also remember some of those are national uh, competencies, whereas we are talking province. So one will have to actually uh, make an, an analysis of which are those that we want to prioritize. If you can notice in the program, it does not necessarily specify, it, do, it does give space for us to identify and pull together what we want to do in the provinces. And that's what we are, we, we are working on a provincial plan just before the king, the lockdown, we actually were having sessions with some of the commissioners. I work with Commissioner Mazbu on, on the Houghton one. So can I just say to a person that I don't have much to report on that and that it, it is work in progress. That's with the concern as a portfolio committee that somewhere, one way or the other, you don't have standard uh, operational procedures as as, as, as as commission as a commission because you are more focused on provinces and 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 you, remember it, as much as you are you have deployed yourselves in provinces but you must look at issues at a national perspective okay chairperson i think maybe i misunderstood the question i thought i had the the chairperson saying a provincial legislation. Maybe I no, misunderstood. We are talking about all all, all, all legislations. Okay. Uh, Sidike? Commissioner Sidike? Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and uh, good evening, uh, honorable members and colleagues from CGE. Uh, thank you very much for your contribution to, to the Solidarity Fund. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, the the question was, uh, what critical positions are we currently having at CGE? We've got one critical position of the CEO. We have set out the, the process in motion. Uh, like the chairperson has said, we want to conclude it by the 31st of, of July. So we've got one position up so far. Thank you, chairperson. And Siddiqui, uh, I'm hoping that you you are not going to mess us ne? With, the, the, with that process because uh, we don't want to find ourselves running around. You should be now uh, 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 running with that process, finalizing everything. You should have now have informed, whether it's cabinet or the presidency, that there, you've got a vacancy. Inform also public service or whoever you must inform. Make sure that uh, as soon as that uh, 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 term of office expires, we are not stuck. We are not running around for interviews and so on. We are, we are doing all uh, within our power. As we speak, we are, we, are, we are faced with a challenge in the NYDA. So our experiences are very bad. So that's why we're going to push you. Because screening you, and verification of qualifications, it must be done independently. Screening by state security, uh, verification of qualifications of applicants it must be, be done by an independent, like what the parliament is doing. So we don't want you uh, as commissioners to have conflict of interest and be challenged. Yeah. Uh, 
Over to you, uh, uh, Chairperson. Over to you, Chair. Um, um, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson and uh, uh, Commissioner Sidiko there. Um, I think Commissioner um, O'Hara was, uh, was, 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 was coming in as the, perhaps the last commissioner, I think. Thanks, Chair. Mutupi. Commissioner O'Hara and Commissioner Mutupi. Thank you, Chair. Chair. Um, um, O'Hara was the last one. Uh, I'm sure there are questions that were not answered. And I'm sure those questions that you haven't answered you need to uh, 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 prepare your, your, your response to those questions. And when we invite you to the next meeting that we are going to have with you, uh, you'll have to respond on them uh, because of time constraints. But uh, so to say thank you very much, uh, uh, honorable members and uh, honorable uh, commissioners and uh, chair and the deputy chair uh, and the, our staff members, Aboka Shifa, uh, and our meeting had to prolong because of 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 of, of this IT problem. You know, somewhere somehow we we got cut off, so uh, we had to extend our time. But I think. Uh, the information that you gave us today, it's the information that we needed most. And I'm hoping that uh, move you forward. And for those that are here in, in Gauteng, we'll have to call you and meet with you as uh, honorable members. Gweba, Sharif, PT, uh, who else is from Gauteng amongst the honorable members, we'll have to meet with you. And, and, and strategize on how do we deal with issues of, of funding, because those issues, uh, they have to be attended to. Uh, thank you very much, honorable members. Uh, I think uh, we can adjourn the meeting if there's nothing else that uh, needs to be responded to. CEO? Sure. Sure. Honorable Mpiti? Thank you very much, Chair. Unfortunately, I can't switch on my video due to, to a connection issue. I just wanted to, to make note of two issues, Chair. The first one is to say that um, my questions relating to the commissioners were unanswered. So I just wanted to clarify yes. that. Uh, is, the, is CGE able to bring a report that clearly stipulates how commissioners' roles and responsibilities linked to strategic objectives in the next meeting, it will be very helpful for us uh, in moving forward. And then the last point is just to say that the, the questions that have been, that we've been noting that have not been answered, mm -hmm. can we get feedback from Undo as to whether or not there's answers to those questions? Thank you. Yeah, what, what, uh, uh, that's what I was saying, that uh, they need to, respond in writing uh maybe submit the questions next uh, by, by next week or by the end of the week and then but you are going to have another meeting with them so that we can finalize outstanding issues so now is the time that we will have to discuss uh, 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 she needs attention because Okay, uh, so I attend this one with Sisaranjani 
Um, but thank you very much, honorable members and um, commissioners. Uh, it was our pleasure to have you in our meeting. And uh, we are hopefully that every time when we call a meeting, you'll be part of the meetings. Chairperson. Mam Kaula, before we attend. Mina any in the end of one go to lap bang bang patel boom pago la pam o commission and sichi e. Lanas kulumanga band best faza and aba reshwa and ababula wana ma case a mil and jang along wabala yo. Kotra manja uhun men bagwa zile uguti batetele uchwala. If you know what put to bona bagu pin jong ba uchwala kmang genok ma statistics. Ya to laga to chwala ku nengo ze ningas and zem kwa kwen wuna banda ba ningi. I'm told by half and a match a la manning. What a yinny lab on a bammy go pick and dog at one. Yabong. I'm not a fifteen with one. No, 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 why not oh. Panama submission? Needs a good command a eh, 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 commit. Who will do that? Who will do that? Will Thank do. you very much. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. And, and Honorable Chair, if you wanted to say something. Uh, thank you, Chair. Chair, I just wanted to just note that. Um, you know, we always ask for written responses from both the department and the CGE, and we never seem to get them. Um, can we just make sure that? We have some sort of tracker to track that these questions come from the committee side so we can keep note of it ourselves. Thank you, Chair. No, and we, we, are gonna, we, are, we need them by the end of, of, of the week. Uh, the, the, the responses, that it, questions that they did not respond to, they need to write them down. But the other things that they were presenting that is very detailed, uh, then we are going to convene another, I'll call another meeting so that they can give us the detail. You know, more, almost all of them, they have uh, issues that they need to, to present to us. Boys, men, what? So okay, we're going to... The meeting is... Thank the you meeting very much. Good night. Thank you, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Good night. Thank you, thank you very much. Sherry! <laughs>